Thank you, Mayor. A team is not a group of people that work together. A team is a group of people that trust each other. Thank you for that thought. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 15 present. Okay, Alderperson Donahue is attending remotely, and Alderperson Andrew Schneider is excused. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, prior to prior to asking for approval, I would like to counsel, the council would like to uh, wish Susan Richards a happy birthday. Make a motion to approve the minutes, please. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. <laughs> Item uh, 4.1 is our public forum. I turn it over to the city clerk. Thank you. Thank you for that well wish for a happy birthday. Um, first on the list, we have five this evening. First would be Debbie Day Milan. Debbie, are you here? If you'd like to come on up to the mic, please. <coughs> And Debbie, can I have your home address? Uh, 1704 North 35th Street. And you will have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Um, the proposed annexation of the Black River Forest oh, okay. serves Kohler, but it's detrimental to city of Sheboygan constituents and town of Wilson residents. The city has to provide the proposed propo properties with access to city water and infrastructure that is cost prohibitive with a balloon on a string annexation. The proposed golf course would require a mile long extension of the water line. Ironically, since he has already drilled three to five high capacity wells on his property, Kohler, according to several Kohler reps, will not even use city water for his golf course greens, city water being used at most only for his clubhouse. This wastes taxpayer money and resources, not to mention the repercussions of Kohler's well water use on adjacent residence wells, which might dry up or worse, be chemically poisoned. Who will finance the lawsuits for this contentious as annexation and individual wells going dry? Most of the other annexed to be properties do not need water. These consist of wetlands, part of Riverdale Golf Course, a few residents, and the splitting of state park lands between two municipalities, possibly affecting the park's integrity. Mr. Seagworth, adamantly opposed to being annexed in an isolated fashion, should equally be taken into account. In addition to violating these property owners' rights, the golf course conditional use permit compromises the adjacent zoning permitted uses. Riverdale golf course owner Guy Miller was not given a voice in his property's partial annexation, which will add an administrative burden with no advantages. Which m municipality will serve him? He will pay taxes in the town and higher taxes in the city solely to accommodate a private developer. With a balloon on a string annexation, who is responsible for roads, police protection, and other services along the two municipalities? Before writing up an annexation map, we need to take into account all property owners, including John Seagworth, Guy Miller, Wisconsin State taxpayers. Why are pri private profits being considered while public needs are ignored? Instead of quickly passing this annexation, consider the violation of our state park property rights. To quote Alexand Alexandra Nugent in her editorial, quote, four acres, it's more than most city of Sheboygan residents will ever own. Many would consider it a large parcel of land, yet in a way, city residents and all Wisconsinites do own four acres and more in the form of our state parks. We've been paying taxes to preserve these parks our whole lives, unquote. 
There is no excuse for Kohler to take public land. Originally, to create our state park, some land was seized from owners through eminent domain. To now let Kohler take state taxpayer property is a travesty of justice. Allowing him to take public land sets a horrible precedent. Whistling Straits occupies 560 acres for 36 holes. If we half that for a course of 18 holes, Kohler would need at least 280 acres. He has only 247. Therefore, his request for public land will most definitely expand as the construction advances, which means we're in danger of compromising our state park altogether. We need to study the environmental impact of the proposed golf course. Some city officials are saying that since they use True Green, we cannot prevent Kohler from using the customary toxic golf course chemicals. Instead of condoning environmental irresponsibility, we all need to find alternatives to the chemicals correlated with increased levels of Parkinson's disease and cancers. Why pollute for arbitrary aesthetic reasons when our health and our future depend upon our environmental stewardship? And to that end, why add yet another golf course to the existing 11 in this county when the Black River Forest is unique in its treasures of being a migratory flyway, wildlife refuge, home of rare biodiverse plant life, and Indian mounds? and along the Lake Michigan shore, complete with sand dunes. Kohler himself protected this beautiful forest for decades. Why level it now when it cleans our polluted air? Leaving the Black River forest intact spares the already impaired Black River and Lake Michigan, our major water source. Let's advocate for environmental sustainability. To quote Alexandra Nugent again, a private entity wants to pave over a rare ecosystem that taxpayers have invested in for over 60 years. Excuse it amounts me, to your time is up. I'm sorry. I just finished my sentence. It amounts to government subsidized land acquisition for private property, and it's wrong. Kohler Company asserts all the time that they are stewards of the environment. Let's give them an opportunity to prove it. Our state park is not for sale. Not one acre. Not four acres. Thank you. Next on the list will be Alize de Moulin, if you could come on up. Alize, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, I live at 1704 North 35th Street in Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. So I want to implore you not to rezone to SR5 suburban residential considering that both the 180 and 190 tax parcels of the Kohler private land is currently is currently according to the tax year 2016 is considered productive forest land this is 56 acres of his 247 so productive uh, productive forest land is not meant for a golf course also we are not destination Kohler as the city of Sheboygan. So this is some information from Visit Sheboygan and it's currently located in downtown Sheboygan operating out of Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce building. Visit Sheboygan is a tourism entity that encompasses the city of Sheboygan, town of Sheboygan, and town of Wilson. It is not part of Kohler, Elkhart Lake, or Sheboygan Falls or Plymouth, and they have their own tourism entities and use their own municipalities' dollars to operate and promote their respective areas. We use our dollars to market the Sheboygan area, mainly leisure and outdoor activities. Our largest target markets at the moment are Madison and Chicago. You can see that this is not really a golf course friendly thing. Another thing, Wisconsin Eastern Lakeshore counties, if we look at the revenue of millions for 2015 and 2016, Brown County, which encompasses the area around Green Bay, and Door County have higher, higher revenue in millions from tourism than Sheboygan County, and these counties are far more wild. So in in uh, conclusion, nature, wilderness, and I may add year-round recreation revenue is higher than the very limited seasonal and highly wealthy demographic that the golf course is going to cater to. Also, if we look at some other Wisconsin DNR parks, Kettle Moraine State Forest, Devils Lake State Park, Peninsula State Park, 
and even Point Beach State Forest had higher Wisconsin DNR attendance than Cole or Andre State Park. So all of these places, if we want to grow our Sheboygan in our, excuse me, our tourism in Sheboygan, we have to protect our natural resources because that is where we're getting the greatest amount of revenue. Thus, the nation Kohler will not give us, city of Sheboygan, anything of that. Also, according to a Milwaukee Journal Sentinel article, Kohler's aim is to host the PGA tournament, but park infrastructure was designed to accommodate a maximum of 350,000 visitors yearly. Whereas according to the PGA website, the 2016 tournament had 560 and then more golfers, 560,000 golfers for only one weekend. How can a combined shared entrance accommodate both state park visitors and golfers when tournament numbers alone will extenu extenuate the current park infrastructure? If anything, we should change the proposal to have him enter from his uh, north side property. Also, according to Ford's magazine, our major industry in Sheboygan, they say industries, but they only list tourism, and they say that Sheboygan hosts the annual Dairyland Surf Classic, the largest lake surfing competition in the world. This is according to Ford's. We're not known in the city of Sheboygan for our golf courses. Also, according to the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce, Salmon fishing is ranked top place for salmon fishing in U.S. by Field and Stream Magazine, and the U.S. Sailing Center, one of four Olympic sailing training sites. When I talked to EOS Surf, they told me that they use the, the wave action and the situation right along Terry Andre, or Kohler Terry Andre Park for their, their Olympic, uh, Olympic sailing training. So, to compromise the entrance to the park when we have this great sailing this great sailing destination is not smart in in uh, contrast if we look at the golf course numbers golf magazine ranked Sheboygan County one of top one of only top seven destinations in the world compared to the surfing being the top destination in the world also, Golf Digest has ranked four Sheboygan County golf courses in the top 100. We're barely making it with the ones he has now. Why add to it? And then the Golf Digest magazine ranked two Sheboygan County golf courses to be in the top 20 golf courses. We could compromise our number one position for surfing for golf, and the golfing goes to Destination Kohler, and the Excuse surfing me, comes to Alizé. Sheboygan County. Thank up. you. Thank you. Next on the list is Dulcie Johnson. Dulcie, if you could come up, please. And Dulcie, can I have your home address, please? 1306 North 3rd Street, City of Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Wealth and influence. These two words describe the Kohler Golf Course annexation process. We know that Kohler has donated thousands of dollars to Governor Walker's campaign in the Republican Party, and now we know that Kohler asked the governor's office to influence the Department of Administration and presumably the DNR to rule positively for a golf course on Lake Michigan using four acres of state park land. Unethical is another word that describes the process. Documents obtained through an FOIA request have revealed that Kohler's attorney, Tom Sick, wrote a six-page letter on May 22nd detailing the city's justification for the annexation. She emailed the letter to city attorney Adams, who put it on city letterhead, signed it, and emailed it to Eric Schmidke at the Department of Administration. The letter, signed by City Attorney Adams, was not signed by, City, by Kohler Attorney Tomsek. What happened to integrity? The emailed letter was noted in a separate email from City Attorney's Office to Eric Schmidke at 3.21 p.m. on May 22nd with City Attorney Adams, City Administrator Hoffland, City Manager of Planning and Zoning Sokolowski, and City Development Manager Peleshek copied on the email. 
Eric Schmidke and three Department of Administration staff members met with three Kohler attorneys at 2.30 p.m. on May 22nd in Madison to discuss the annexation. I believe City Administrator Hufflin was invited but did not attend. No town of Wilson officials were invited. Subsequently, Eric Schmidke wrote a letter stating that the annexation was in the public interest and that the proposed golf course would fit better in a city than a town. It must also be noted that the legality of the Council's closed-door session on April 24th, at which the annexation was discussed, is being questioned because the notice hid the contents of the negotiations between the city and Kohler. It is alleged that the Council should have discussed the proposal, at least partially, in open session. The pre-annexation agreement caps Kohler's litigation costs at $200,000. Alderman Donahue has estimated the cost to be at least $400,000. Why should city taxpayers pay litigation costs for the annexation which Kohler initiated? The town has pointed out that Kohler has not provided the necessary permits for them to move forward, while the city is moving at warp speed to accomplish the proposed annexation. All of this information should concern you. You should also be concerned that after agreeing to the original pre-annexation agreement, Kohler reneged on certain clauses. You have received information about the town of Wilson's experiences with Kohler. As you know, past behavior predicts future behavior. You should be concerned about that and what other changes might mean for your constituents. There are four aldermen who have connections to Kohler that should recuse themselves. Two aldermen work at Kohler and Alderman Nelson works at one of the Kohler golf courses. Alderman Drawn is a principal in the Dufour Advertising Agency and Kohler is a premier client of Dufour. Although it may be considered legal for them to vote on the annexation, it would not be considered ethical. They should recuse themselves. Lastly, if the land is annexed to the city, those who are most effective will be without representation when problems arise. The town officials will be helpless because the land is no longer in the town. The city will probably not care because these people are not your constituents. The city's interest in the proposal is what is seen as an opportunity to acquire more land in the town for I-43 economic development. Why not just acquire that land instead of endorsing destroying a forest to build another golf course? Too many seem too eager to accept this hostile annexation and rationalize it as the only way to grow Sheboygan. We have learned how deceptive Kohler was in accomplishing their balloon on a string annexation proposal. It seems they will stop at nothing to accomplish what they want. Members of the council, you need to ask yourselves, what do you stand for? What are your principles? What will rule the day? Wealth and influence or ethics and integrity? Thank you. Next on the list is Jim Schusler. Next on the list is Jim Schusler. Jim, if you could come on up. And can I have your home address, Jim? 3508 Willow Circle in Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Last Thursday marked the 230th anniversary of the passage of the Northwest Ordinance. This act, which predated the inauguration of George Washington by two years, helped establish the necessary protocols for Wisconsin to become a state. The brilliance of this act also helped serve for the foundations of townships. Townships serve as temporary forms of government. Ultimately, the development of cities and towns, which still grow today through annexations, all owe their thanks to the Northwest Ordinance. The ordinance drew immigrants, including my great-great-great-grandfather, Lorenz. I must have taken, it must have taken the lure of opportunity for him and his young family to leave the beautiful area of Bavaria. They passed through Ellis Island and started their family business on 100 acres in the town of Wilson, Wisconsin. 170 years ago, Wisconsin was not even a state. I'm very grateful that neither a psychiatrist from Chicago nor a banker from Madison preceded their arrival here, trying to control what they could do or could not do on that 100 acres that they owned. They might have returned to Bavaria. 
Now, folks, I speak to you from the heart as a taxpayer of this city, even though my job is to help development in the entire county. I can inform you that annexations are methods that cities and villages use to grow. We have used this tool with great success over the past years in several communities throughout the county. It's quite common that these annexations require TIF incentives to make the project go. About two years ago, uh, we completed an annexation in another community in the county that required millions in TIF. Everybody's happy with it today, but the great news is this proposal on the table doesn't require a nickel. This proposal even finances the installation of the water line, the water line that we will ultimately use to help tap into for additional development. This property will go on the tax rolls immediately. This is an opportunity that not only sounds good, but it is good. We have already run through the overwhelming economic impacts that will benefit the city, county, and the school district. As Blue Harbor's general manager told you several weeks ago, the more people that we draw from going to Door County and beyond into here in Sheboygan County, the better it is for the taxpayer from both the city and the county. In my role at SCDC, I engage business owners and elected officials daily. You must know that other municipalities are asking why this is so hard. Some have even asked, quite seriously, if the city passes on this request, is there some way that they could tap into this opportunity? As stated by the Wisconsin DOA, this proposal is in the product, uh, public interest, meaning the expansion of tourism locally is good for businesses and local city and county tax collection. It was said this was going too fast. In fact, this has been going on for years. And were it, were, were it not for the town chairman signing a petition against the development, something that I verified with him personally, chances are this situation wouldn't have even come to the city of Sheboygan. Government must work with opportunity, not against it. Too fast. Watch someone try to delay it again tonight. Were it not for, this delay, for, for delay, Aurora would already be constructing their hospital medical facilities here in the city of Sheboygan. You know what the result was? Over a third, nearly a third of a billion dollars of development going on in another municipality other than the city. Please know that I, along with my coworkers, work daily fighting for economic development in the county. It's a great county. Due to many factors, this city has the, been the greatest benefactor of what we do, and no other municipality has ever, ever complained about that fact. We love the county, we love selling the city of Sheboygan, and we will work for your success, but know this, that 24 plus mill rate works against us. And you need to know, and you, and you know for a fact, the state requires us to hold that levy. The city is left with cutting costs and garnering revenue where it can. This proposal helps bring revenue without raising the levy. If the DNR and Army Corps approve the development plan, this plan brings potential tax relief to city taxpayers. We're enthusiastic about the development of the city of Sheboygan's business park. It offers great opportunity to attract businesses and help them grow. But no, many of those businesses in that business park are going to come expecting incentives. And this, prod and this plan requires none of that. It's imperative that you know this. This city's, one of the city's largest employers is presently deciding whether to continue operations here. Out-of-state municipalities will offer them the kitchen sink to leave Sheboygan. At a time when they are making decisions about Sheboygan, your choice here tonight matters. The way we treat our county's largest employer, it'll matter. Excuse me, Jim. Your time is up. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, bottom line is the DNR and Army Corps will do their job. This decision tonight is about the economy. Thank you. Uh, next on the list is Dane Chekolinski. And Dane, can I have your home address, please? Yes, I live at 3217 West Apache in Sheboygan. And you will have five minutes. Sure. I'll again state that the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation supports the proposed golf course. Although tonight, I'm not speaking as the director, but at, rather as a resident of the city of Sheboygan. It is clear there is a well-organized vocal minority group who does not want the course built. Although various reasons have been given, it is clear their main concern is not in my backyard and will grab at any straw to bolster the perceived negative effects of development. This group, selfishly motivated, used tactics of intimidation, misleading information, 
and to ensure their will of stopping Kohler Company to build a golf course. Even before this issue became in front of this city, as a result of this annexation request, this group has fought with neighbors about the course. Several business owners and neighbors who support the course within the town of Wilson have been successfully silenced due to the uncontrollable passion this group brings out. <clears throat> this group in its desperation has started to attack aldermen. Alderman Boren and Holschutz. You were personally called out on the group's Facebook page with contact information on how to contact you. The friends to aim is clear, to paint you as corrupt community leaders and state you are in bed with Cole or Company. Their goal is to make you scared of voting yes tonight. Despite their passion for conservancy, the friends have never proposed to start a capital campaign to purchase land and put it into public trust, guaranteeing that the land is safe, or at least strongly guaranteeing it is safe. Makes me wonder if they are more concerned with preserving land next to their door than to ensure a balance between development and conservation. Despite the groups claiming to, be, to have environmental concerns, they know if the city votes no, I do believe that there, that there is already a development approved on this land. The friends state they are fighting for environment knowing full well they can never control this land, but will convince you that they can. There's one thing that the friends and I do agree with and I appreciate their passion. The council should not vote yes because it will solely benefit Mr. Kohler. Rather, also because it benefits the city of Sheboygan. The annexation creates a win-win. The assessments of Black Wolf and Straits Club houses alone suggest the city would see well over $80,000 in property tax. Combined with room tax, the city is easily meant to see over $100,000 in its general coffers. As you know, the biggest issue in the city of Sheboygan is the condition of the roads. Given that grind and relay repair, this revenue can maintenance about three miles of road. This is 36 blocks of the distance from Erie Avenue to the lake indefinitely. The proponents state that only tourists would use the course. Assuming that would happen, I am happy to see the tax burden shifted from hardworking Sheboyganites to tourists. Any chance the community has to do that, I urge you to do so. The opposition also states we don't need another golf course. Could you imagine what Wisconsin Dells would look like today if in 1990 the leadership of that community said, you know what, we have Noah's Ark and we have family land. We're the leader in outdoor water parks. We don't need another one. Who would possibly ever go to visit another water park in our community? Then came Chula Vista, the Great Wolf Lodge, Kalahari, Mount Olympus in the wilderness. Do you think that those ruined their community or built it into what she is today? Do you see the cars driving by Sheboygan on their way to areas like Crandon, Shano, and Door County? I avoid Highway 43 on Sundays simply to avoid that traffic. There is plenty of market to be had. Alderman, I thank you and appreciate your passion and devotion for our city. I hope tonight you can look past the fear-mongering, personal vendettas for Kohler Company, and delay tactics. I urge you to vote yes on this agreement because it is a win. It is a win for our city. Thank you. Thank you. And that's it for this evening for public forum. Next item on the agenda is mayor's announcements. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody that National Night Out is going to be coming up on August 1st. That's a Tuesday. It'll be held from 5 to 7.30 at uh, King Park. The event will include uh, supper by the food trucks, music from Open Door Entertainment, refreshments and face painting by Target. Law enforcement vehicles will be there. Fire department equipment will be on display. And guest speakers will be the sheriff, the police chief, and myself. And there will be community-related exhibits for safety. And we also are in the middle of our uh, festival season. Uh, the Levitt Amp concert took a week off last week and they'll take another one off on this Thursday, but they'll come back on July 27th and continue every Thursday until August 24th. And we also want to remind you that on uh, this Friday, the 21st, will be the early bird lobster boil at Fountain Park. Coming up on July 28th, 29th, and 30th will be Meesfield's Lakeshore Weekend for Kids. Uh, that'll be taking place on South Pier. 
And on July 3rd, 4th, and 5th, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, will be Johnsonville Bratwurst Days in Kiwanis Park, presented by the Sheboygan JCs. So I hope everybody has a great time at these events. Next, we'll move on to uh, our agenda, documents pertaining to the annexation slash zoning. Item 2.1 is RO number 85 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Roger Miller regarding the Kohler Company annexation petition in the town of Wilson. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a, a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Item 2.2 is RO number 87 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting the communication from Eric Thielen sharing his response to the Sheboygan Press regarding David Beeble's editorial. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Uh, motion passes. Item 2.3 is RO number 88 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Jane Zabrowski stating her objections to the proposed annexation from the town of Wilson to the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. I'm sorry, what, did Alderman Donahue say nay? Was that I said aye. aye. Thank you. Thank you. Get used to the time lag. <laughs> <laughs> Item 2.4 is uh, RO number 89 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Gina Segworth stating her father John Segworth does not want the annexation to the city. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. Motion passes. Uh, next is item 2.5, RC number 72 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom is referred RC number 51 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee and resolution number 28 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue and Bourne authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the pre-annexation and development agreement and recommends passing the resolution along with the current amended agreement as of 7-12 of 17. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'm, I'd like to make a motion to hold to the next meeting on 2.5, 2.6, and 2.7, please. Second. We have a motion and a second. I'm sorry, who made the second? I heard three. Alderperson Boren. Thank you. Um, is there any discussion on the motion? That is debatable, correct, City Attorney? Uh, Alderperson Lewandowski. I pressed it for a different item. Okay. Uh, Alderperson Wolf, did you have any comments? Not at this time, other than that, uh, would like the time to review the, the uh, information. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? Alderperson Holshue. I'd like to call the question. Second. Okay, the question is before us. Will the clerk please call the roll? All right, an I vote would be to hold. A nay vote would be to not hold. don't want to hold? No. Okay. Ten eyes, five no's, and that would be for 2.5, 6, and 7, I believe. Motion passes. 
Next, we'll move on then to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.5. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a, a motion to accept and file all, all ROs, accept and adopt all RCs, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Items 4.1 through 4.10 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, item 5.1 is resolution number 44 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing the appropriate city officials to act and execute an amendment between the city of Sheboygan, the state of Wisconsin, the Department of Transportation, and McMahon & Associates for additional design services related to the railroad crossing and additional reporting related to the North 15th Street project. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and pass the resolution. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? I'd like to know why we're suspending. Alderperson Wolf, can you expand on that? Um, could we ask uh, Chad to come up and explain? David? David? David Bebo? He's coming. David, there's a question on the um, uh, authorization for design services on the North 15th Street project. Could you please uh, respond to that issue? Why we're suspending the rules. Yeah, th this is for the North 15th Street project, which we are planning on construction in 2019. This is an amendment to the engineering services contract. It's with the DOT and federal funds are being allocated to this project. This is an amendment with the city share on this. We ha it's, there's a timing issue with coordination with the railroad crossing. So in order to get this expedited, we, that's why we had to suspend rules. Thank you very Thank much, you. David. So the, uh, the motion to suspend, is there any objection? Seeing none, all those, those in, uh, other further discussion on the motion? No other further discussion? Will the clerk please call the roll? Susie? Okay, thank you. This came through. 15 ayes. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.4 <coughs> will be referred to various committees. Moving on to reports of committees. Item 6.1 is RC number 68 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee, to whom is referred RO number 69 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting various license application and recommends that Beverage Operators License Application number 1704 from Michael D. Elias be denied based on his record of violations related to the license activity, his history as a habitual law offender, and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Second. Under, under discussion? Yes. Is Michael Elias here? Michael Ellis? I don't know if he'd be in the other room or not. Does not appear that he's here. You check just to be certain. Michael was asked to come before our committee and was a no-show, and he has been denied based on 
the fact of his history of being a habitual law offender and failure to cooperate with the committee. Thank you for that information. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Okay. Item 6.2 is RC number 69 of 1718 by the Law and Licensing Committee to be referred pursuant to RO number 84 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting various license applications. He recommends that the permanent change of premises application of alcohol beverage license number one, excuse me, 3117. Harbor Lights to be denied due to proper, it rather improper description of the premises. Alder Person Holshu. Thank you. I ask that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Second. We have a motion in support under discussion. Um, the reason that we're denying this is because there was um, some questions as to the boundaries that he's requesting. So I believe that. Um, <clears throat> I should ask, is, is Dave Nanning here? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chad. Um, we believe that he will reapply with the correct boundaries working with our city attorney. Thank you for that information. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion passes. Next, we'll go on to ordinances. Item 7.1 is General Ordinance Number 10 of 1718 by Alderperson Holshue, Donahue, Lewandowski, Reinfleisch, permitting horses in the downtown area and providing for prompt cleanup of manure. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you. Um, I do not believe we need to suspend and pass the ordinance. I would like to request this to lie over. Is that correct? That's fine. You can do it either way. I, I request that it lie over. Okay. Second. Is there any objection to having this lie over? Seeing none, then that's what we'll do. Uh, next, move on to matters laid over. Item 8.1 is resolution number 42 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf, authorizing accepting a grant from the Sheboygan from Sheboygan County in the amount of six thousand nine hundred and twenty-five dollars to be used towards the ADA kayak canoe launch facility at Kiwanis Park. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on that item? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Aye. Fifteen eyes. Motion passes. Under other matters, 9.1 is RO number 100 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Mary Fadis sharing her thoughts in regards to the zoning and annexation. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion aye. passes. Item 9.2 is RO number 101 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Diana Federer stating her concerns about the proposed annexation from the town of Wilson. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. 
Item 9.3 is RO number 102 of 1718 by the Board of Contract Examiners submitting applications for building contractors licenses already granted. Alderperson per, all Holshuk. I ask that on um, the report, is this a report of committee be accepted and adopted? Accept and file. Accept and file, please. Is there a second? Second. Thank you for that motion and support. The motion's on the floor for discussion. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Items 9.4 and 9.5 will be referred. And Alderperson Wolf. But we do have another matter. I've got one more. One more. Okay. Sorry. 10.1 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2017, June 30th, 2018, and June 30th, 2019. That would be referred to the Lawn Licensing Committee. Is that it? That's it. Okay. All the person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to adjourn on Sue's birthday. Second. <laughs> is there a second? Second. second. Uh, all those in favor of adjournment on Sue's birthday, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. That Thank you very much. That is not going in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs>